Um, now, I mean, I do think that there's a potential path here, which is, and we're really getting into science fiction or create, create you know, sort of advanced science stuff, but having some sort of uh, merger with biological intelligence and machine intelligence. Um, to, to some degree, we are already a cyborg. Um, you think, like, uh, you think of like the, the digital tools that you have, your phone, your computer, the applications that you have, like the fact that as I was mentioning earlier, you can ask a question and instantly get an answer uh, from Google or, or you know, from other things. So you already have that, and, and, and it's like if somebody dies, their digital ghost is still around. You know, all of their emails and their, the pictures that they posted and the social media, that still lives even if they, physical, if, if, if they died. So over time, I think we'll probably see a, um, a closer merger of biological intelligence and digital intelligence. And it's mostly about the, the bandwidth, the speed of the connection between your brain and your digital, the digital extension of yourself. Um, particularly output. Like when, and, and output, if anything, is getting worse. You know, we, we used to have like keyboards that we'd use a lot. Now we do most of our input through our thumbs um, on a phone. And that's just very slow. A computer can communicate at a trillion bits per second, but your thumb can maybe do, I don't know, 10 bits per second or 100 if you're being generous. Um, so some ha high bandwidth interface to the brain, I think, will be something that uh, helps achieve a symbiosis and between human and machine intelligence and maybe solves the control problem and the usefulness problem. Uh, Getting pretty esoteric.